There are three or four types of reverbs on the market. Plate, room, a 19 inch box and the plug-in, with the last two a bit the same. Reverb is used to create space around your sound. When a sound is completely dry and you want to live it up a bit, you can use reverb for this to make it bigger, roomier or taking some distance from the front line. So instead of a sound being in your face, with a bit of reverb it could also be over here. Every type of reverb has got their own controls and their own settings. And let's start with the plate. These things over here are EMT 140 plate reverbs. They are very old, very vintage and it was a lot of work to get them working again. But these three are all in working condition. Let me show you how they work. This is a plate, a metal plate and if I touch it I think you can hear a reverb. Over here is an element that works like a speaker coil. So it pushes the sound on here. And over here and also on the other side over there, there are pickup elements that pick up the reverb again. So there's only one adjustment you can quickly make and that's the reverb time. You can adjust the reverb time with a big wheel on top of the plates or on our other plates with the motors uh, which are remote controlled from the control room so you can directly hear the difference. Of course there are other things that you can change, for instance the tone of it. Uh, you can have it rusting away for 50 years and it will change the tone. And you can also tune the plate. So the holding clamps, you can stretch them and make the plate tighter or less tight to change the frequency and the, uh, the tuning of the plate. Yeah, that's all you can do with a plate, an original plate. The sound character of it is amazing. A room reverb, or better known as a reverb room, can be something like this. This is the main recording room of Sound Vision Studio. The same studio that lent me my microphones in the video of yesterday. It has a lot of adjustments, uh, a lot of settings you can change. For instance, you can change the curtains on the wall and of course where the signal comes from. This can be a drum kit like this or a speaker. And you can adjust it relative to the microphones, the room microphones. Reverb rooms or room reverbs are great on drums. And I'm not a great drummer, but I'm going to try it. Back to the studio. And lastly, a box array plug-in. They are both the same in controls. They are digital boxes, but a reverb box has got specialized DSPs in them, specially made for reverb, which is really intense for a computer to do. While a computer just runs on their normal CPUs, which aren't made for the purpose of making reverb, but for the purpose of calculating everything, the algorithms on a reverb box can be much more shaped than on a plugin in your computer. Not to say that reverb plugins are bad, I'm just saying that the boxes maybe sound better. Oh, and by the way, I also find them handier to use in an analog setup. So there are a lot of controls in a digital reverb and you can almost go crazy from them. We've got pre-delay, room size, mid reverb time, bass multiplier, early, late, diffusion, you know, so much things. And to understand these things, we first need to understand that we are not controlling one, but two reverbs. We've got the early reverb and the late reverb. The early reverb being the reflections. A reflection most of the time sounds like some sort of a ping pong ball in a room, so a really short fluttering reverb. While a late reverb sounds like reverb as we all know, a really undefined bed of sound. A control like room size controls the early reverbs the most. It controls the distance between that ping pongs and also how they sound with a bigger room representing lower flutter echo than a smaller room. Pre-delay is as it says a delay before it's being sent into the reverb. With this you can create some distance between the initial dry sound and the reverb coming after it. To understand the mid reverb or reverb time of your reverb you gotta dig into the manual. Every manufacturer uses a different indication of the reverb time. Sometimes if you for instance set a two second reverb time the reverb will be lower by a predefined amount of decibels. If this is 24 decibels then after two seconds the reverb will be 24 decibels lower than the initial zero second reverb. 
The bass multiplier is made to get a bit more low into your reverb because this is something that gets lost in a lot of algorithms. To set up a reverb, I personally like to put a snare in the tempo of the track through it. So every quarter note, a snare drum is a noise and a noise has got a wide spectrum of frequencies in it. By using a snare drum in a reverb, you can directly hear the differences in color and also what it does to the groove and the timing of your track. When doing it right, with the settings of a reverb, it can really help your track sound bigger, but it can also help in terms of the rhythm of the track. A lot of guys put the pre-delay down to zero because they will get immediate reverb but try out and put the pre-delay up by an eighth or a quarter note. This can give some really musical results and it might even be easier to mix the reverb sound in with the original. Then the last type of reverb, which is a bit separate from the rest, is a convolution reverb. A convolution reverb is a simulated reverb. For instance, the altiverb is great at this. The altiverb has got sampled rooms in there. So you can put your singer into Broadway, for instance, or a church in the Netherlands. They simulate this reverb by setting up microphones in the room they are simulating and playing all types of different sounds into it to see how the room reacts to this reverb. I never use convolution reverb. I really like to play around with the reverbs and tweak them. And even if I've got time, I'm spending it in a big room, making the reverb all by myself by changing configuration of the objects in the room and creating a unique reverb, something that no one else can make. I wanna thank you all for watching this video. I hope you learned something new about reverbs. If so, let me know and give a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, do the other thing and give a double thumbs down. If you haven't already, go and subscribe to my channel over here. And if you like my videos and want to see more, I've got them linked over here. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.